ah it's good to be back when we last left off i performed raw hardcore mostly uncensored analysis of all of our more skeptics data supporting his view of gender expression which didn't take too long because he didn't have any this time we regana do some more of that about some more people nothing particularly unique this time i just thought it'd be nice to cover a few more people i wanted to do more last time but the video started to feel like it was dragging e no let's have another look and see if there are any decent rebuttals to nice recent work we'll be looking for a couple of basic things like if the arguments actually hold water when you look at them oh if they have any oh sources or data that they cite if they put it in the description so people can click to check if it's actually right or not oh we no really basic stuff like that i'm sure that's a low bar that no one will be tripped over right who's first intro music boom well there's this mouthy budha guy his attempts to criticize rachel bloom's musical segment caused him to devolve into screaming me pussy over and over until he was literally just reverberating and pulling a stupid face my pussy my pussy my pussy talks my pussy my pussy he seems like a lovely individual he's using their very popular rhetorical strategy of acting like a fucking idiot and then saying that's what i think feminism is me being stupid proves they re stupid i put some jokes at his expense in the last video and i thought it would be funny to just use that clip of him doing that and then not go back to him ever again but even if i wanted to do more than that i'd have some trouble because the video is mostly just him whining about how morally evil it is that rachel bloom empowered ignorant women and how betrayed he feels by bill nee for not saying and he decided was true about the issue dude name the smartest people in the world they all think this gender fluidity shit is bullshit no evidence is necessary to support his beliefs apparently who is this empowering it's empowering ignorant woman people that you air dancing with are making our civilized western culture more and more degenerate every day i thought feminists were worthless and unproductive members of society but according to genius non-foot shooter mouthy budha it turns out that actually western civilization is so weak and vulnerable that rachel bloom can destroy it with a song about her vagina listen mate if you think our great civilization is that weak maybe you should move somewhere else presumably back to the spitting image puppet dimension to the spitting image puppet dimension do blid you do 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 his other videos tree really hard to be dramatic pseudo documentaries with text effects ornate fonts and important sounding music as he talks in a dramatic voice about how wick was totally a real measurement of human ability and behavior we need to understand the validity of wick to know that this is real and predictive of human behavior you know for someone who seems incredibly certain that it was a valid and important unit of measuring a person's intelligence mouthy budda does appear to have listed his own ick anywhere i invite you to come to the one conclusion there can be about why he wouldn't do that these videos attempt to create the illusion that he's so smart and needs to be taken seriously but he's already put out a video where he whines and vibrates at a camera so the genie's out of the bottle there mate while i could point and laugh at how he's a libertarian trying desperately to backpedal from supporting the alt-right after realizing that his bedfellows don't seem to realize that eugenics is unethical or pretend that his other work means he's worth taking seriously i think it would be funnier not to who's next do you have any idea how reputationally damning this is well there's this guy who calls himself some black guy. His videos entitled, Bill Nye Ruins Me Childhood. 
Oh, dear, did the science man hurt your feelings? But I thought rational people put facts over feelings. He 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 he. Bill Nye is now diving into the magical fantasy land of progressive identity politics, and he's doing it by, oh, his show, Bill Nye Saves the World, and I've only seen bits and pieces of it, and I am in a Ghana. I'm not gonna watch it all the way through. Oh, great. Not only has he not actually seen the show, just the cherry-picked chunks that ended up on YouTube, he doesn't even plan on watching it. Points for honesty, I guess. For most of the video, he plays clips from the scant bits he has seen and pauses them to cut away and try and make a clever riff. Standard cutaway commentary stuff. But it's actually a lot sexier than that. I don't know about you guys, but there's absolutely nothing sexy about this whatsoever. Hey! Bill said it was sexy for a joke, and the audience laughed along because it was a joke, but Derek says it isn't a very sexy at all. Oh my god! He's got him. He's owning him online with discourse. Can you feel the logic and reason yet? And then, for the rest of the video, he extemporizes about the horrifying state of the world now that some people identify as non-binary. And now you have a bunch of people that, that just want to be heard. They want, they don't want to be normal. They want to, they want to live in this fantasy world where there's all these different options and shit. Oh no. People want to have options now. Like you race starting to see on on websites where they have multiple options for gender where it was just always man or woman. Now there's like, oh fuck that. No, I know. Non-binary or something else should be an option. I am like, why? It's not that fucking serious, dude. I mean, I know to a lot of people it is, but in, 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 in the, in the grand scale of things, this is extremely trivial. I agree, it is extremely trivial. When someone comes up to me and says, I'd rather you refer to me by these pronouns from now on, I say you, all right, because it's really not that hard, and it doesn't really affect me life all that much. Oh no, sorry, you meet the other kind of trivial. The kind where you spend days of your life recording YouTube videos, complaining about it while insisting that it's trivial. Sure. I asked for a little help with that, and who better to talk about sex than two sexy two cis male white goats? This dude has fallen off the deep end. Why couldn't these people, why couldn't Bill Nee or anybody, any cis white man, or just a, a cis male 4-4, four, four, talk about this type of stuff? Like, why is this even mentioned? Why is this even even in, in, mentioned? Why would you say that? It, it, like, how is that even funny? My favorite part of this clip is that he realizes at the very end, asking these dumbass questions about why would you dare say that, that Bill was just making a joke. So he suddenly cuts himself off and goes, how is that even funny? Like, you can see the moment he realizes that maybe Bill Nee's sentence shouldn't, he'd be taken literally seriously, but he can't admit he fucked up. So he just cuts himself off and goes, Well, I wasn't funny either. I wasn't saying that cis male white guys aren't allowed to talk about sex because they err. They continue to do so after making the joke. I am really surprised by how easily these folks are tripped by jokes. Now, I could just systematically own Durek for all the stupid shit he says over the course of the video. But I've set myself the lofty goal of cutting through the chaff and analyzing the core claims themselves that appear to be holding up the rest of the rants, and seeing if at least they hold water. You know, all this bullshit is bullshit, but he might have a point in there somewhere, 
so I did some digging and found Direct's central claim, which is that Bill Nee has gone against the science, and he knows this is what's happened because real scientists used to say otherwise. But now he wants to play make-believe and say stuff like, Oh, gender is on a spectrum like sex, you know. There's such a thing as, like, non-binary and stuff like that when you know before, like any other science. Oh, or scientist that has come before him has just said there's two genders and they redetermined by the chromosomes. Chromosomes. Whatever, he probably misspoke. He doesn't provide any data or studies to support the idea that gender is determined by chromosomes, but he also does not even dare say that himself. Instead, he says, well, scientists say it, and he believes those scientists over Bill because, well, they say what he thinks is true. Certainly not because he's seen the evidence himself, because then he'd have bothered to show it to the viewer and not hide behind. Scientists say it, wouldn't it he? The funny thing is he trees and fails to claim that this is what Bill used to say. This next clip is unintentionally amazing. Something that he said himself as well. In an act of utter hilarity. After saying this used to be what Bill said himself, he cuts to a scene from an old episode of Science Guy where someone who is definitely not Bill himself explains chromosomes. Before you reborn, your mom gives you one of her chromosomes and your dad gives you one of his. Now, we re gonna investigate that claim in a little more detail in a sec. But first, let's stop and think like video editors for a bit. Look, it's me one actual area of expertise. I was gonna shoehorn this bit in somewhere. I'm going to be charitable here and assume that Derek did some research in advance. He probably at least watched some of the clips from the Us Cream bit or the musical bit that people were spreading on YouTube and saw people claiming on Twitter that Nee used to say genders caused by chromosomes and then hit record assuming Bill had actually said it. Now, the question is, why would he think Bill had actually said it himself in the first place? He must have got this idea from somewhere. Well, in the spheres Derek runs in. A very popular homage was circulating on Twitter with a picture of Bill holding up a diagram of chromosomes with subtitles claiming they decide a person's gender. These subtitles were fake. Nye said nothing of the sort in that actual segment. The image was spread by noted bastion of truth and ant enthusiast Ian Miles Chong in the hopes of convincing gullible idiots. And, well, evidently it did. It appears that Derek here took it for granted that that was what Bill had said and didn't even check it was true until after recording, so he had to use this clip of someone else saying something that you could twist to be about gender instead. Now, I'm just spitballing here. There's no way of proving that's the exact chain of events. Oh, Derek could have just missed the widely shared lie tweeted by Chong, who he follows on Twitter and which was originally tweeted just minutes before direct tweeted. Why is Bill Nee all over me feed? You know, it could have been a different chain of events, but it was Now, I'm not saying Derek saw a fake screenshot and took it as fact without checking and that this is antithetical to the very principles he claims Bill Nee has abandoned, but it certainly looks exactly like that. However, Let's ignore this blatant ignorance and hypocrisy and talk a little about the segment he did end up using, featuring someone who isn't, Bill Neo talking about chromosomes. This clip is also widely used elsewhere to claim Nee's previous show was right and then he got infected by feminism or something. Direct contrasts this old clip from 1996 with his present stance on the issue in his new show. Many months later, Lenny I used to think there were just two settings, male and female. At least you actually had a clip of Bill talking about the issue this time, Derek. The implication, of course, is that Nee has abandoned the science and become allier, 
but this reflects our very poor understanding of the absolute basics of Bill Nice, old show, and how it was constructed primarily to give children a baseline understanding of science in the 90s. The old show, I hate to point out, never really did cover sex, gender, or sexuality in much detail, if at all. Covering these issues on a show for kids in the 90s was pretty much off-limits. You'd come under fire for indoctrinating children into an evil agenda and other gay panic nonsense bullshit garbage. You know, the sort of thing similar new Puritans would do in the modern day if, let's say, there was a YouTube channel aimed at educating kids about these issues. I wonder why the producers wanted to avoid the ire of Derek's ideological predecessors and risk getting pulled from the air or sent death threats. They steered well clear and, to me, knowledge, only ever barely broached the subject of sex differences when it's in relation to something else. The segment All the Idiots are pointing to is from an episode about probability. No, not sex. Not here's an episode on how chromosomes work. Probability. Imagine for a moment that you re one of the writers of this show. Let's say you rewriting an episode of a science show about probability, and you have 23 minutes to explain it to an audience, and an example you want to give is the probability of which sex you were born. And if Dad gives you an axe to, then you become a girl. But if he gives you his e, then you become a boy. Even though, because you know your stuff, because you re a researcher for a show about science, the science behind transgender people is known to you, you rewriting in an era where, generally speaking, the terms sex and gender are conflated in common parlance. And you rewriting a show for kids. In fact, you rewriting lines for an actual kid to say, so you have her say, if you have a chromosome, you re a boy for convenience's sake. You also wrote a funny skit where Bill picks the wrong door to his lab and falls off the roof of a building. Oh, 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 oh boy. See, there are only two possibilities. You know, as a writer for the show, that there's a probability of a person being intersex or other rare chromosomal differences that complicate this simple one and two probability. But ye you know that taking the time to explain this here would mean cutting into the wizard of Oz a skit where you reenact the wizard of Oz and Bill Nye is the wizard. If you want to improve the chances of getting home safely, wear a seat belt. The chance of becoming either a boy or a girl is always one in two. A fifty minus fifty chance either way. It's like flipping a coin. Mom, you re a girl. Ea, you re a boy. You also, because you re not an idiot, have done more than five seconds of research and know that the probability in most industrialized nations of being born physically male is generally higher than being born physically female, so the chances are more like 1.5 in 2. Meaning it's not like flipping a coin so much as like flipping a coin that's a very slightly weighted as a result of complex environmental factors. And there, it's also the rare but real possibility of the coin landing on its side. You don't to bring this up either, because Bill really does to want to cut this skit where he counts dice possibilities next to the gint fan he stole from the set of Blade Runner. And since the video is boiling down probabilities for children, you leave it out, hoping people more discerning of the science will understand why you left it out, and privately, you pray that none of the kids in the audience will grow up to call Bill Neal, earlier when he explains the more complicated version to them as adults. Does he cite any sources to back up his claims throughout the video? Why? Some black gum gives an exhaustingly comprehensive list of his merch store, Patreon, PayPal Second Channel, Twitch, Instagram, Ask, Snapchat, Email Grand or Chimney, Splango, etc., etc. Unfortunately, he doesn't cite any sources because he doesn't have any to back up his beliefs, 
but he feels very strongly that he's right, and that's why you should check out the shirts for sale in his merch store. For example, this one about how facts are more important than feelings. And he's right. In making an informed argument, facts are important. Would have been great if he'd had any, wouldn't it? Some black guy more like some lack of evidence got. Oh, cut that out. That's just rubbish. I hope you re-sick off bullshit. Because here, YouTuber no bullshit with his video entitled Bill Nigo's Full Stool. Trashes whites, praises transgenders and gays and by no bullshit. I apparently meet to say no sources. I bet we re for a real science and research fest here. I am sick of people over-inflating the amounts of gay and transgender people in the population, and I have nothing against the people, Don to get me wrong. I am just sick of this overly gay, overly pro-trans narrative being pushed everywhere. Everywhere that toes the line with the liberal stoop crowd. It's gotten beyond annoying and is verging into unsettling and disturbing places. When I clicked a video by someone called No Bullshit, I thought I was entering an intellectual thunderdome. But so far, all he's done is complain about the overly gay, overly pro-trans narrative that's being pushed everywhere by the liberals. I thought this was supposed to be about science, but this guy's just sharing his feelings about the liberals. What is this? No Bullshit's whole deal a pubie to pondering whatever he's watching part way through to fantasize about the deep hidden emotions or the evil agentess of the people on su 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 part way through Oh, 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 oh,
God, even the new theme song is shittier, and it just screams I'm desperate to be cool and hip again. Here's a black guy singing me theme song. I am down. Now either Mr. Bullshit, if that is his real name, which I'm going to assume it is, can read minds, or he's just written an elaborate fanfiction about Bill Nee wanting to look hip, so he personally gets Tyler, the creator, to make the new theme. Because apparently no one else is involved with the production of a show. The man the camera appointed at, he personally writes it all. He commissions everything that goes into the show. He personally hires all the animators. It's all Bill Nee. It's not like their sub production crew or anything. Who better to talk about sex than two cis male white goons? And this is also where I lose all hope for the show. Anyone who uses the word cis is either an whack job, or they re someone who's trying to pander to them. Or this, I, I, I am someone, eh, oh, eh. If you hear someone say a word you don't like, pause the video to complain about how that makes them the bad people. Bonus points if you then go on to make videos complaining about how everyone else is easily offended by words. They pull it off with so much confidence that it doesn't feel weird, it just feels like hey. So now we jump to Veritasium on location in Korea. And to be honest, listening to this pop widow talk, I feel the same way Veritasium looks. He looks squinty. He's looking down on this creeper, raising his upper lip in disgust. He looks squinty, and that means he's looking down on the person he's interviewing. He secretly hates them. He secretly hates the this Rachel Bloom bitch sounds like she's trying to be the next Amy Schumer or something. My vagina. My vagina. No one cares about your gross vagina, lady. I'm not gonna even touch those frankly Freudian comments about finding vaginas weird. Now, as can be plainly seen, 
this no bullshit fellow does not really have any understanding of the science and isn't all that bright otherwise so he does not even really understand why he's so angry that the show is too pro-gay so he wallpapers over the cracks in his own understanding by imagining that everyone on screen is sad and angry and hateful and wants to look cool and is pushing an agenda and is an evil liberal and wants to be like a mis humor which doesn't really make any sense no one wants to be like a mis humor not even a mis humor wants to be like a mis humor now if i really wanted to I could go through the entire video and make one of me patented. Cetacean needed jokes every single time he makes a claim and then does to support it with any evidence whatsoever. This still does change the fact that there are only two genders. But instead, I decided to take a leaf out of his book, but instead, I decided to take a leaf out of his book, but instead, I decided to take a leaf out of his book, but instead, I decided to take a leaf out of his book and just imagine it that he likes the smell of his own farts and then move on without thinking about him too much. Oh, we re running out of people pretending they have compelling arguments. Quick, what about previous appearance have our red pill philosophy? The guy who couldn't even remember the names of the main characters of The Force Awakens in the car after getting out of the theater. Maybe his video Bill Nice Netflix show trashes white people, glorifies trans you wait, haven't we seen that title before? So it's like a game. You guys are writing the same thing. I love that clip. It's from Roosh complaining to some journalists, accusing them of secretly plotting to push a unified narrative by writing similar articles, as if there's some multitude of ways of reporting about his legalized rape article but I like reusing it in a better context of people in his sphere copying each other's work. I can't wait for them to start suing each other. Those court cases are gonna be hilarious. But speaking of doing the same thing, at this point, I'm starting to see a lot of repeat performances of people plotting out the same arguments again and again in new, even more uninformed incarnations. We've got the lecturing the white race argument. Some Indian dude came on to Bill Nees a show to lecture white people about cultural appropriation. Prashant lectured the entire white race on how it's unacceptable to use Asian mysticism because it's from a different culture. UV got complaints that it's too political to even talk about this stuff, or outright fantasies of a secret liberal agenda. Pushing leftist liberal stool narratives. This episode is very clearly politically driven. Oh, it sits its politics like bringing the politics into the science. And we've got the same sob stories about how he used to like Bill, but then he betrayed Mim. Bill Nee is a childhood hero to a lot of people, including myself. His television show Bill Nia the Science Guy was informative, innovative, and entertaining. I was extremely excited when Netflix announced that they'd be releasing a brand new Bill Nia series. You used to be a voice for hard science. When I was a child, you were just this cool figure for science. You are a representative of science, and you just shit over all of it. And, of course, we begot the fantastic repeat performance of not bothering to cite any sources or studies to back up any of their claims. At this point, my mind's a blur. I can't honestly tell you what Red Pill Philosophy said in his video, and the first time I watched it, I wasn't sure if I'd somehow seen it before and forgotten. I tried to rewatch it and see if he says anything worth specifically debunking but my eyes just slide off him and I start to think about all the vacuuming I could be doing. Bill Nee, the establishment guy. Nothing but an establishment shill, nothing but establishment propaganda. If you go to the Twitter page of that March for Science, oh, Twitter page, 
it's at establishment propaganda bilney the propaganda guy bilney the establishment guy um so bilney the propaganda guy bilney the establishment shill guy at this point in my quest i was desperate for someone anyone who had something different to say it didn't even have to be right at this point a different set of wrong arguments would have been enough to make me feel alive again and then out of the darkness came rage after storm rage after storm is one of those youtubers who actively courts a far-right audience and likes to talk about how race is real and tweet about how hitler had some really good ideas this video is entitled bill me the jewish guy please stop getting triggered over the jew thing getting triggered over the 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 it's a reference to the nose it was just banter the video opens a little familiarly to begin with with the standard totally not fabricated bill nee sob story i loved him and it made me want to think about stuff but then he said the bad thing look i know that so many people air starting to catch this store virus but i never knew that it would be me dearest bill i respected him so much no really he was me muse but then she goes off the fucking chain off the fucking she the she one ups armored skeptics by scream slut shaming and begins trying to figure out which sexualities the us creams represent in the comedy ice cream cartoon. You have vanilla, that's a straight. One of the flavors then has to be a lesbian one of them has to be gay one of them has to be bisexual okay someone over here is a fucked up ice cream some most of sasa cooks call over here so do do call call crrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
and that throws off the delicate balance of nature or something they think these people air allowed to exist and that's fine that's okay we've finally gotten them that far but they have to exist in the background somewhere you can't accidentally make it look like it's okay to be like that because that's basically just pushing their agenda on people none of it is meant to be like a fashion craze or a trend or something that's cool okay it's not this provides people with pressure pressuring people into becoming by and having orgies is that really what the cartoon ice cream skit does to people this might just be me opinion but i don't think many people are going to have their sexuality changed or their identity radically altered by media presenting it as okay to not be straight or not be i'm going to say the bad word cover your ears cisgendered i'm at the risk of sounding a little bit stubborn here but i just don't accept that people who are secure in their own sexuality are going to have theirs changed by other people being open about their own which is why me conscience will be clear when at the end of this sentence i cut to a graphic depiction of what i get up to in me bed every single night i am playing legend of zelda brief of the wild you can play anywhere because it's portable it's a really good game guys but don't to get me wrong that doesn't mean that there aren't a very positive effects of having good representations of old people in media this kind of goes without saying but generally speaking it's healthy for a person to feel like they re allowed to express themselves and their identity without fear of not being accepted or of being treated like they re lesser as a result of it perceiving positive representations of old people as some kind of insidious trick is academically speaking very stupid versatile love may have some but stuff you i think that short clip of someone saying but stuff and cutting to her saying who sums up her coverage of most of this episode Ha 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 she seems to be aware of how little she has to say though so she quickly moves on to the episode dealing with overpopulation and carbon footprint and what to do about it someone on the panel talks about the much lower carbon footprint of people in a non-western country and we get this well just watch how many does the average american i did that with me coffee this morning yeah sixteen metric tons is what the average one hundred sixty times yeah exactly and so our two kids are way more problematic the Nigerians with an average seven children are not the problem when it comes to climate change. The reason why they have so many fucking kids is not because they care about what's happening with the environment. I am pretty sure Botswana over in Africa is not popping out kids and thinking, it's okay, I can have this seventh kid. It's sustainable. It's okay, I'm not using all this kato. I'm not creating greenhouse gases. No, they have kids to fool selfish ways of getting them to look after them when they re older. They have kids because they know that child that they re popping out right now will probably de from famine diseases or both. Contraception for them is out of the window anyway. I mean, they don't even know how to put on a fucking condom. I mean, can we really trust these people to take a contraceptive pill every day? Can we really? The answer is no. 
This video took a fucking turn. She takes the comment about the lower carbon footprint of people in Western Africa and just goes off on a rant about how stupid and bad those people are, how they can't be trusted to put on a condom. She doesn't even appear to notice that the image she's using to stereotyping an entire continent of people is literally taken from the website National Stereotype.com. So should we have policies that penalize people for having extra kids in the developed world? Um, so I don't think that we should at least consider it. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. So let's set people in Western countries to stop. I'll let this unhinged rant continue, but let's just pause for a second and keep in mind that what the guy actually said was I think we should at least consider it. Remember that she's this angry about a very non-committal comment about how we should maybe at least think about it. Remember that she's angry here about the idea of thinking about something. Let's get people in Western countries to stop having kids. You know the people that are actually solving the problems with climate change. So then people in the third world can overpopulate us. That's right. Rage after storms talking about the great replacement, the easily debunkable idea that foreigners are going to take over the West by outbreeding us because of differences in birth rates. They were importing these third worlders into Western countries like Germany where the population is aging and on a decline. They re importing foreigners and they re going to take over. She even uses the phrase replacement rate. If you'd like to know more about this idea, and why it's total bullshit. Actual skepticism user and skull reclaimer scene engine did a video debunking it handily. So handily that it got false flagged and taken down for a while by idiots because its existence was inconvenient for them. Check it out. Rage's version of the Great Replacement is even less informed and even more overtly racist than it normally is. And by saying to the residents of the third world, oh yeah, no you keep on having kids, you are basically shooting yourself in the foot. When I am out and about and I see people with loads of kids, it's either people that look like they dance around wind turbines with hemp sandals on or people who aren't really Western Europeans. She concludes that the solution is education. That this, this uh, solution guarantee you the way to solve this issue is by education. I agree. Some people could certainly do with knowing a bit more about the issues before they open their mouth to dog whistle about being replaced by immigrants. Moi, moi. Now some people who are watching this video might genuinely think the great replacement is real or otherwise not along with similar scaremongering about immigrants. And I bet those people feel hard done by right now. I can imagine it that Free Speech Fan 1488 has already paused the video to go you didn't actually debunk the great replacement you just made fun of how completely fucking unhinged it sounds. She cited a newspaper article to prove that she's right. 
Why didn't you bother to debunk that? You we ignoring it. You we afraid of the truth. Well, hold your horses, mate. Let's look at that newspaper article in more detail. Shall we? Luckily, to her credit, rage after storm in the interest of transparency has put a link to all of the sources that she used in the description of the video, including links to where she got the Bill Nee clips from, a bunch of newspaper articles calling Bill Nee a full of shit baby man who said the bad things from places like Pio, 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 the federalist not a publication i had heard of but that's all right let's just click the link to that source in the description and has in that said this oh weird that link isn't in the description i wonder why instead i had to find it myself by googling the title oh boy it's an article from the telegraph that bastion of accurate political reporting entitled nine in ten babies born in parts of britain have a foreign parent that's the title do yourself a favor and keep in mind for a second the phrases nine in ten and parts of britain now let's read the first paragraph almost nine in ten babies born in parts of britain have at least one foreign-born parent official figures have revealed for the first time for the almost nine in ten well We've already stepped back one from the headline. Almost nine in ten is not nine in ten. At least parts of Britain has changed. Oh, well, maybe it's some big parts. That's a still a lot of people with foreign born parents, even if it was eight in ten. How about we read the second paragraph? The Office for National Statistics disclosed that in 2012, more than 80 of babies born in three London boroughs had either one or both parents born outside the book. Oh, some more back darling. Almost nine in ten is actually more than 80, which they refuse to pin down with the actual percentage. I wonder why. Actually, I know why. It's because the number was to convenient enough. And these foreign-born parents children air being born at this proportion in three london boroughs just just for those of you who don't to know london has thirty-two boroughs the telegraph found a very small part of britain with a high relative birth rate among foreign-born parents and fudged the numbers enough to get an attention-grabbing headline to make it look like we are being swarmed by immigrant babies what they actually did was draw a very small circle around a part of the country where a lot more immigrants live than the native-born population. 
the figures were published amid concerns that hundreds of thousands of migrants from romania and bulgaria could come to britain when restrictions are lifted in the new year wait those errant the places rage was talking about rage was talking about people from africa and the great replacement is all about diagrams of maps full of little black people overwhelming little white people and websites pushing italies about native women being encouraged to procreate with african men this telegraph article is scaremongering about very different groups from the current targets who tend to be from more brown muslimy countries that's because rage is citing an article from twenty thirteen back when the immigration restrictions were set to be lifted and many totally smart people feared we did be floated so heavily with romanians and bulgarians that the country would literally collapse back into the ocean from the added weight which as we all know literally happened just kidding this reasonable rational thinker who thinks they the outscienced bill me tried to scaremonger about immigration from the wrong place than the one they re talking about by citing the headline of a three year old article that all but admits it's completely misrepresenting the actual data a few paragraphs in hey look i think we figured out why she didn't to bother linking it in the description also note that when she does show the text of the article it's blurred so you can't pause it and check to see how heavily distorted the article is being with the truth weird how she knew to do that almost as if she knows the source is full of shit but didn't think anyone would bother to check now if you re anything like me and i certainly hope not you re probably wondering why of all the articles to cite about immigration and overpopulation why she would pick such an old one scaremongering about immigration from a different place like why of all things would this article or its data form the basis for her claims let's assume that you re gullible and you be been tricked into believing the lie that foreigners are coming to outbreed you and you re so sure it's right that you don't feel the need to do any research but you know you need to look like you did to seem credible so you'd need a news story to flash up that looks like it supports you how would you find an article that suits your needs well if it was me i would google something ridiculous like too many foreign babies and pick the one with the most attention getting headline that also looks like it did some actual statistical analysis you know like maybe the fourth own down even this attitude to science studies information and facts is probably one of the many reasons why rage and others found nice recent work so baffling it appears that many people without ever actually checking anything have already decided what the truth is about issues of gender or immigration or global warming speaking of denying the science of climate change i made a joke about stephen crowder in the last video and a bunch of people went, ooh, is he gonna do Crowder next? And I hate to disappoint me fan, so let's take a look at some of Stevie's work about Nice recent work. That's an awful retake that. Let's have a look at some of Stevie's recent work about Nice recent to say he did it again. I've saved myself the job of really having to go through his claims about the gender episode, because I've covered all the main ones already, and as we've already covered, these people have a habit of repeating each other's points. He washy washies making the case that gender exists on a spectrum. By the way, very different if you go back to his old show. He did say that chromosomes determine gender. If you go back to the episodes when we were orchid. So he's done a one eighth down there. So instead, I'll point out that his real beef with knee comes from how Bill's so vocal about climate change and doing something about it, and Crowder is sure that the science dosed. He support man-made climate change, and he has some counter-arguments that he's sure are good. And then you have evidence, and the evidence disagrees with your world view. So you deny the evidence, and then along with that, you deny the authorities that are providing the evidence you will not deny the authorities 
Now, we re going to be talking e a talk in a German voice authoritarian joke. Why, that's almost as good as knowing the signs. Oh, who wants to take a bet with me that at some point he's recently made a video accusing the left of calling everyone nazis and how unproductive that is. Just kidding. I've seen more than one of his videos, so we know he does that. So I know he's seen more than one of his The left has been so busy calling everyone nazis. Who would dare invoke needless comparison to the nazis? What sort of imbecile would dare do something like that? Um, no. He's just talking authoritatively in a German voice. That's not necessarily invoking comparison to the nazis for political points. Completely unrelatedly just, you know, nothing to do with the last sentence. Here, a segment from a video that he did about neon climate change. Now, everybody, science is political. Science is political. Incorrect. First, let me draw your attention to the definition of science. The intellectual and practical activity. Ben and practical. Ben and Oh, me God. I forgot that he actually cites the dictionary definition of science to tree and avoid accepting the basic fact that, like, in order to stop the world from melting down, scientists might have to tree and influence policy. Wait, 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 no, this gets worse, though, isn't it? Merging politics and science, not allowing them to exist autonomously of each other, can only serve to alter science's trajectory to the path of truth. Okay, that's the main purpose here, and he wants that specifically. Some examples. I know it seems tired and old hat, but let's go to Nazi Germany. That's kind of a prime example of political science. It also, of course, led to guessing a few individuals. You heard me right. If scientists tree to make the government listen to the effects of global warming and do something about it, it's the same as the Holocaust. With Steven Crowder, it's honestly a laugh a minute, watching him flip-flop between comparing everyone he does like to the Nazis and their genocides, and complaining that way too many people are comparing things to the Nazis nowadays, especially those leftists who are the only ones that do it. But where are the other scientists speaking up? Kind of like with Islam. You know we say, where are the Muslims speaking up against the acts of terrorism? Not only against terrorism, weird how in the same video, 
where Crowner goes from saying how dangerous political science was to the Jews. He then, for seemingly no reason, decides to start spreading the like, legit lay that Muslims don't condemn terror attacks. You know, I expected this video to contain lees about Bill Nee and the sides. I did not expect it to contain lees about Muslims. I guess when you only have two talking points, you gotta find a way to fit them in somehow, right? You know, Steve, there are many gigantic lists out there of Muslims and Muslim groups that have come out against so-called Islamic terror. But I can't think of a single Muslim who's condemned global warming. Coincidence. Where are the Muslims speaking up against the acts of terrorism? It's so very weird how he has to keep quibbling about nonsense, instead of easily debunking the data he says can be easily debunked. And when he really does get around to trying to actually debunk climate science, when he's not saying people wanting to do something about it air nases, he's doing such a poor job of debunking it that you don't even need me to show you the flaws in his understanding. Even racists can accept climate change as a problem that begs a solution. Can and us and the zealous and engines. Problem when it comes to climate change. Yes, I agree that climate change is an actual problem and it needs to be sorted out, and we do need to sort out the consummation of electricity. And then I'm honestly really quite stunned that in the middle of a video complaining about the bisexual agenda, spreading racist lees, scaremongering about immigration, and whose description has to defend the fact that she says Bill Nee has a Jewish nose, Lady Stormfront still manages to have a better stance on climate change. Crow said this said 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 That's the lowest bar of the ever seen and Crowdy Wody has just tripped over Git and fallen into a well. And it's not just rage that puts Crowder to shame. If you want to see his claims get debunked in more detail, there are many good videos out there by the Oh, seminal and personally inspirational Patholer 54 and Armored Skeptic. Ah, that's right. We just came full circle. The Antarctic ice sheet showed a net gain of 112 billion tons of ice per year, but you didn't mention that there's also a net loss for the entire planet. Greenland also has a major ice sheet. The total net ice loss for Greenland is an average of 269 billion tons of ice every year. So the planet suffers a net loss of 147 billion tons of ice every year. You see, Skeptic was wrong about most of the issues he brought up about Nice a show, because he doesn't really have a grasp of the related science. 
but he's right enough about climate science to know Crowder's full of shit. The truly interesting thing about skeptic and those like him is that if you pay attention, you can quite easily discern the places where they've actually decided to employ reason and skepticism and proper fact-checking, and the places where a sort of party line has formed off the same arguments repeating themselves over and over, but no one's really thought about the issue in that much detail. For these people, ignoring the latter, and the parts where they just kind of complain about these Joes. The former can actually be quite informative and interesting. Not always, but quite often. This schism is interesting, and the solution isn't all that hard. It actually just means employing reason and skepticism, but even more, about even more things. It would be nice if he acknowledged the existence of me video criticizing him, or even tried to respond at all to the points in it, but I know how long this kind of thing can take. You've got to pick what you cover with your time very carefully, or nothing gets done, and I certainly can't criticize anyone for doing what they think is right with the time they have. For example, I've spent nearly two months of my life reading data and biology books and studies about trans people and reading about the lived experiences of being trans in order to come to a better understanding before broaching this topic and responding to criticism, before realizing that most of the criticism didn't do any research, and there was really no reason for me to do most of that reading, and Ivy had basically no chances to show all the work I did in this video, and I'm thoroughly disappointed in my... I... 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 I accidentally took the time to educate myself, to no benefit other than my own personal expansion of knowledge, like some kind of loser who thinks that's important, and to think I did all that just to respond to videos covering an episode of a show that I didn't think was very good at covering the issues anyway. I want to close by focusing on a section of that episode that a lot of people complained about, probably because it rightfully made them feel uncomfortable, because it made me feel a bit uncomfortable, too. So I'm gonna ask for a little help with that, and who better to talk about sex than two cis male white goes. It sat with me because I really can't devoid what it's pointing out. I can talk all day about whatever the right way to discuss or present these issues might be, but at the end of that day, I will still be an outsider to those issues. I was deeply curious what the opinion of someone who's actually affected by these issues might be about the show, so he reached out to trans YouTuber Zinnia Jones for her perspective on the issues, and she sent me this. Let's watch. Hi, I'm Zinnia Jones. I'm a trans woman, and I've been covering transgender issues on YouTube for several years. Personally, I enjoyed Bill Neese's presentation of the spectrum of gender and sexuality. As a trans person, Ivy often found coverage of these topics for a cisgender audience to be oversimplified or awkward, 
but this episode was surprisingly painless and even charming and it offered a nuanced explanation of human diversity that's sadly lacking in most media i was glad to see such a high-profile presentation of concepts that i and other trans advocates have been raising awareness of for years such as the decoupling of gender from sex and the recognition of non-binary genders the use of gender expression in south korea's culture was a great concrete example of how our ideas about gender can be actively shaped by societal influences and I felt that the Ascrium segment was pretty effective in connecting sexuality to something that people can viscerally understand in their lives. Being told that your favorite flavor of ice cream is wrong would make no sense. And as they depicted, the people who feel the need to tree and rewrite their sexual orientation do tend to end up in some very queer situations. As someone who loved watching Bill Nye as a kid, I'll admit it was a bit strange to hear a song about hand jobs and power bombs, but on the whole, I think this episode is a good introduction for people who may not be aware of what we now know about the full range of gender and sexuality. Um, when I went to find an alternative perspective, I had kind of banked on it kind of semi-resembling the one I'd had. Like, it would have been really convenient for me if I could end the video with, hey, remember what I thought about the episode. Well, here's someone who knows way more about the issue, and they agree with me. But no, it turns out me perspective can be flawed. I think Sinia makes an interesting point that I completely missed. Ultimately, Bill Nee's doing what Bill Nee has always done. Provide a rudimentary baseline explanation of a topic to an audience whose science education may well have ended in high school. Like when we discussed the act of writing an episode of this show earlier, pointing this out puts a lot of this episode in perspective. Nice a show is for such a broad audience of folks who may not know anything about the topic. In a way, the only people who this episode is for are people who already think a lot about the topic people who live the topic because it's a part of their daily lives and of course people who think that by simply thinking about this issue too much you've taken the wrong side in a culture war something something liberal agenda blah blah to pro gay now at this point i am contractually obliged to mention that exposure to this video directly may make you up to fifteen more gay so it's highly recommended that you wear your ideological protection goggles provided underneath your sci hang on a second. Why is this written at the end of the script? Hey there, thanks for watching. I'd like to thank Horikawa Otone for letting me butcher her name like that and also for help with the research that went into making this video. If there's any mistakes, it's because I forgot to run them past her. I'd also like to thank Zinnia Jones for recording her contribution, that was very nice of her, and also ContraPoints for recording that one line, which she did on incredibly short notice, like the day before this video was gonna come out. Thank you very much for that, Contra. Most of the music used in this video, including the song you're re hearing right now, was created by Krista Lee from her album Fantasy Zone, a tribute to the music of various Sige games. It's on Bandcamp. Check it out. Link in the description. And finally, thanks to all me lovely patrons for enabling me. In a didici to chick.
for the new BB music club down at the beat creek division, Pamela and the new division, the new the real bar and the real V, the Vinny, the Z, but I can be a real read, Carl and the real bar, he above the vision, Carl Mary, the Vinny, the Z, 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 the Father Violi, Cassi, Bobby, Father Vell, Vizilla, Vizilio, Carmen, the Bleak Hill, Bob, Vizilla, the Boot, Vizu, for Ben Lemon, Bibu, Vizio, you be away, Bell, Leak, for ye, Carmen, Ben, Carvio, Bell, Pima, Zuza, Zil, Bell, Bell, Carmen, the Lucidio, Emily, Bell, Duzilla, Zell, Gauchin, Carly, Carly, Oh, you think you re so clever. Hero reward, I don't you know. Like a butt or something. I am Neapolitan. I am daddy's little bitch. Seriously, though, I'm trapped inside a fae and weak lock Scott. It turns out I was wrong about everything. Jack Harvey, Jacqueline Merritt, Jackachov Boris, James, James Adair, James Ijan Anders Bremer, Jan actually had to send me a recording of him pronouncing his name for me to get it right. I've been pronouncing his name wrong for like a year. I'm so sorry, Jen. Jason Durso, Jason Walter, Jeffrey Theobald, Jenny Engel, Jeremy, Jerry Terry, Joe, Joe Haynes, Joe Cantwell, Jordan Barrett, or Jordan Tullis, Justin Conquerbaird, Justin Partridge, Justin Schwendeman, K. Played Dota. Congratulations on getting over your addiction. Kevin, Sathalon, 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 I said, I'm going to move for you, but in the movie. Said, I'm going to move for you. 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 Father, 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 seven, 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 father, seven, father, 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 Seven up for seven seven well when the position for the real Bacanco quality you well. Seven well the new position for the shoe well well. Seven up for you will keep Willow, his Zodak, and Ace Jenny. It's good to be back. Oh fuck. That was a complete accident. Shit. Are you okay, Mr. Skeleton? I'm okay. 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 That was completely unscripted. I did not do that on purpose. It just fell down. Jesses.